Now, let's look at the gradient from the viewpoint of a directional derivative. This time, instead of moving only along a contour line, imagine moving in any direction in the plane. Naturally, the change in f depends on which direction you choose. So the question is, how can we measure the rate of change of f in a given direction? Well, that's exactly why people came up with the formula for the directional derivative. The directional derivative tells us how fast the function changes at a given point when we move in some direction vector v, like this purple arrow here. And here is the neat part. It's computed by taking the dot product of the gradient vector with that direction vector v. Remember, v has to be a unit vector, so its length is 1. Now among all possible directions, so in which direction does the directional derivative reach its maximum? In other words, which direction makes f increase the fastest? Of course, the gradient itself. That's what the gradient has been telling us all along, the steepest direction. And when the two vectors point in the same direction, the angle between them is zero. So cos theta equals one. Plugging this into the dot product formula gives us the product of their magnitudes. But since v is a unit vector, its magnitude is 1. So, in this special case, the directional derivative just equals the magnitude of the gradient itself.